Well, some new information in the Boston Marathon bombing investigation. We're learning more about the three friends of the suspected terrorist Yokar Zarnayev, who police say tried to destroy evidence to protect him. One of them is charged with lying to investigators. The other two pictured here with the younger brother, uh, that's Yokar in Times Square, are charged with conspiring to obstruct justice. Scott Weber served as a senior counselor to former Secretary of Homeland Security Michael Chertoff. Pretty serious charges. What do you make of those? Well, it's disturbing, especially in light of all the press attention, the photos that were released, and then these three students realize very quickly that their friend is one of the primary suspects. Uh, instead to the authorities, what do they do? They reach out to their friend, and then ultimately it appears that they helped destroy evidence or tried to. The narrative that seems to have emerged, maybe in part from the defense lawyers for these young men, is that these are just young guys panicking when they see a friend of theirs on TV, and they just acted to protect their friends. What do you think about that narrative? Well, I actually know one of the lawyers, Bob Stahl, known him for 20 plus years. We worked for the same federal judge together over two decades ago, embarrassed to say, but uh, Bob's a very capable lawyer. He's got a tough job ahead of him. Uh, it appears to be more than just some young, innocent students who didn't know what they were doing. There appear from the complaint to be very calculated actions by these three young men to try and destroy the evidence and help their friend because they were afraid he was going to get in trouble. What's going to be crucial to knowing whether or not they were involved before the event? Well, to the extent that they're going to talk anymore to the feds, there were, my understanding, some interviews beforehand uh, on the immigration issues. I don't know if they're going to clam up now or maybe in the context of working out a plea deal, but I think the, the circle of influence for Joe Carr, who else he hung out with, who else he associated with, will be very important to learn about. Do you think there's going to be more arrests? Uh, you know, it's pure speculation. I mean, one of the things that sort of jumped out at me when you read the criminal complaint is that uh, Sarnayev's roommate was in the room when the three young men came in to collect the backpack and the Vaseline. I'm wondering where he stands in all of this. There's still the, the female DNA that the government is working on. Um, there's the older brother's wife. So I, I don't think the story's done yet. Based on your experience in the Department of Homeland Security, one of the questions that comes up about these two young men, the, the two middle ones in the picture that our viewers were seeing on the screen there, is how they were able to come back into the country if their visas were expired. I just recently renewed a passport. It wasn't an easy thing to do, yeah. and, I, and I'm a citizen, and I imagine that if it was wrong, I wouldn't be able to leave the country. Right. So how, how does that happen, that it's expired and they're... So, Jenna, we've talked before that, you know, there's so much data that exists, and the government has to sift through all that data. This should have been a little bit of an easier one if the visa was expired, which apparently it was when one of the uh, defendants came back into the country on January 20th on an expired visa. CBP should have never let him in. So there's clearly some other roads that the government needs to go down to find out why that happened. Do you think the Department of Homeland Security and some other agencies have just grown too big? I was looking at statistics after 9-11, so we went from not having an agency for the Department of Homeland Security to now having nearly 200,000 employees. So mm -hmm. those numbers obviously haven't, in this case, particularly shown to be more effective, although, to your point, sometimes these things happen and that's part of reality. The, the problem, Jenna, is is government is slow to move to change. And and I keep hammering on this, but it's really important. Data, 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 technology, technology, technology. Look at uh, Abdul Mutab, the underwear bomber. We couldn't connect the dots then. Clearly there were some dots that weren't connected here, both before the bombing with the Facebook page of the older brother, and then after the bombing with there was some Facebook activity between these three boys and, and Yokar, as well as texting that was going on. The government needs to be more proactive in how it takes a look at data and leverages off of what's open source. Open source is very, very important, and we're not using it as much as we should. It's out there, and it's that's why there. it's manning. It's, it's there. It's there for us. All right, Scott, great to have you as always. Thanks, Thank Jenna. you. John?